Hi guys, it is the Jada Bow Podcast. I am your host, Jada. This is episode 14. And I'm really excited about this one because we're going to talk about how to be a feminine woman. And the reason why I wanted to do an episode like this is because I coach different women and I have different ebooks. I have one called How to Magnify the King and Your Husband. I have one called I'm the Prize Said Who, A Wife's Guide to Eliminate the Spirit of Ego. And those have been my top selling books, over a thousand purchases each ebook. Thank you guys so much for that. I had the most fun writing those. And a lot of people have messaged me and said that it's helped change their marriage and their relationship dramatically. And I recently dropped an ebook called Beyond the Chaos understanding her emotions and the reason why I wrote that one is because I did an episode about BPD recognizing signs of BPD amongst women uh, narcissism amongst women and how to you know help you get out of the symptoms of BPD and a lot of men actually husbands and women too but husbands actually reached out to me because we're not being educated on mental health issues and BPD they did not know where the issue was where this resulted from and they were trying to figure it out all on their own and then they were able to get some guidance and finally some help and reassurance of like this is this is mental health this stems from childhood trauma this stems from you know being in fight or flight mode and so that book is very very insightful i definitely recommend taking a read you guys can find it my pillar link down below of this episode or in my instagram uh for this page for this podcast channel or in the youtube clips uh bio in the YouTube bio. (laughs) Um, And you guys can find uh, that ebook, again, very, very insightful. It's speaking on the point of view of, as a wife, what my husband had to learn and how he had to um, move and how he had to construct things. And my just advice to the husbands in a relationship like that, because they're not taught up what this is, especially, you know, I believe like minorities, we're not taught taught about mental health issues. You're just taught to stick a band-aid on it you know my husband he grew up you know in a black community no one talks about schizophrenia no one talks about like you don't know about those things and you don't know that's actually pretty common um there's symptoms that follows with bpd and it's uh not unusual to get into a relationship with someone if they had trauma that might deal with signs of that so check out those ebooks you guys uh again i have coaching calls where i speak to men and women but i want to do this episode called how to be a feminine woman uh destroy your masculine energy and have my notes <laughs> to help guide me but um if you guys want to actually watch more if you guys do end up really liking this episode i have a friend she lives in london uh her page is called femininity fresh she's very popular for giving feminine tips i love her she's such a classy classy girl she's so beautiful and she's single okay but you need to you need to love god and be a very masculine man but you know (laughs) check her out okay so i'm gonna go through my list of things that i have learned to do as a wife and how to be a feminine a feminine wife and i've gotten you know compliments of maybe like a little bit of how I, I try to conduct myself and carry myself that was learnt okay i was very uh not that way you know <laughs> in, in in so many ways but i found joy in trying to embody and convey femininity i've seen phenomenal results in my marriage and in in my life by taking on these different qualities and these traits and it's it can be quite fun so for those that might comment comment and say oh it sounds like a pick me it's very fun and i'm picked but you know my husband loves it he loves it he loves that i have fun with it he loves that i like being feminine that i strive to be feminine and it's actually just made for such a better marriage it's made you know your intimate life better it's made your you know relationship better you guys are far more in love with each other when you guys really embody uh for a man masculine um traits and qualities being a masculine man and not having masculine energy and for a woman to be feminine and in her feminine energy so the first things first is do not compete with him Okay, don't compete with him. Allow him to feel useful. There's so many, you see the phrases of like, I don't need a man, I don't need a man, I don't need a man. I need my man, 100%. Okay, even if I do know how to do something, I'm a very skillful woman. I, you know, am smart. I have started businesses. I have ran a business myself. I do have skills and qualities, but I will find every single way to need that man. Okay, can you paint? Can you, can you put up? 
Can you put up shelves? Can you can, please help me? I would even have my husband because I did waxing. I would have him, you know, wax my underarm stuff. I know how to do it myself, but I need your help, honey. You know, let your man feel useful every day, all day long. You know, um, it's okay to depend on your man. You know, one of the th- one things that one thing I heard from another podcaster, they said, um, you know, when you're in a relationship, you're not independent. You're codependent. You know, you are dependent on someone else. You guys come together and you guys are dependent on each other. And that was really important for me to hear because that's true. I am dependent on my man. There's things that I need. I can try and attempt to do all these things by myself, but it's exhausting and it's tiring. So have fun depending on your man, telling your man, I need you. I need you. You know, um, it's okay to ask for his help often, often. Let him figure it out. He might not do it the same way you do it. He might not do it at the same time frame as you do it. But why why are you rushing? (laughs) Why are you rushing? Let him figure it out. Ask questions and show curiosity in his interests. I have coached women. I've talked to women who are like, I don't like that he does this. There was one man he would uh, like to go bike riding, hunting out with his friends, and the woman hated it. Why do you have to hate like just because you personally want to do it doesn't mean that you have to hate on his hobbies find interest in what he likes to do you know my husband loves music and 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 he's very artistic he's he's very artistic guy and he works in um uh producing and making music and all of that and even though i i love movies i don't really listen to a lot of music I still find curiosity I want to hear his beat selection I want to have fun with it I want to try to make a song with him you know I used an AI app and I said can you please write up a song for me to show my husband and it wrote up a song and I sent him the lyrics and he just loved the effort and showing interest show interest take interest they love that they love that you don't have to be what they are but let them feel like what their hobbies are are cool to you in some ways. Find some some way to have fun with it. If he's a hunter, he likes hunting. What type of meat do you like? Do you like meat? <laughs> ask him to bring you home something. You know, ask him to bring you home something that you might enjoy and want to try. You know, um, so that's that's uh, a little bit on 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 my tips on that. And then remind him of his worth all the time. Remind him that he is worth something to you. You know, I I tell my husband he was complimenting me because he said, I you know you sound like a very intelligent woman. You're you carry yourself really good. You're doing a phenomenal job with your podcast. And I said to him right back, I said I wouldn't even be able to do that without you, honey. Like you have molded me and shaped me and cultivated me to be able to be this woman. Thank you for taking me out of like being masculine. Thank you for being so intelligent, so wise, teaching me all the time. If I do an episode, you talk to me afterward, you give me pointers, you tell me how I can improve in this way, that way you, he even teaches me don't say like and um so much, you know, work on that. I, and I tell him all the time, thank you so much. I wouldn't be this woman. I'd probably have an ignorant podcast. (laughs) You know, I probably have an ignorant podcast and I try to be, you know, and bring in some good insight that people can use. So I always tell him if it wasn't for you, you know, I don't, I wouldn't be this woman. So thank you so much. Number two, do not mother him. No man wants to lay down with his mom. I heard that from an older woman, my best friend's mother. She said, no man wants to lay with his mother. So, you know, don't mother him. Allow him to figure things out. Okay. I think that there's so much joy like watching a man be playful and young. I was, there was this account dedicated to dads, their husbands as well. And they were so playful. They're so playful. You know, the, the father made a whole fort for his kid and it made a mess. And, you know, I could just, you, the woman was like nagging, like, oh my gosh, who's going to clean this up? Let him play with his child. Let him play. Let him be imaginative, creative, you know, with his kid. Let him do him. Don't be a mom, you know, to your husband. Number three, be warm and welcoming, you know, um, warm and welcoming. Take pleasure in making the house very warm. So light some candles, um, smile more. Don't be so hostile when he walks through the door. You know, I know women, I've coached women that are always hostile. They're very angry women when they walk through the door. When my husband walks through the door, I try to make sure there's some candles lit. There's jazz music playing. You know, the house smells good. And then smile. Hi, honey. If he's not having a bad day, you don't have to have a bad day with him. Just say, okay, honey, I'm here for you whenever you need someone to talk to, if you need a hug or anything. I love you. You smell good. You look good. Oh, you look so sexy. I know you're tired, but you look good. You know, just compliment the man. Be warm. Be a very warm, 
woman, I always say I don't believe in the phrase a happy wife, happy life. I don't believe in that. <laughs> I believe a healthy husband, a healthy home. And the reason why is because your husband is the head of the house. And so if his mental health is declining or it's not in a good space, the house is going to fall apart. So I always try to make sure my hub husband is healthy. He's eating right. He's in a good mind space. How can I be of assistant? How can I help you? You know, I prioritize him and make sure he's okay. And he's a giver. So he loves to give back always. My, I'm always, I'm always given because he has no problem. He loves... That makes that's what makes him masculine is he feels as though he has to give and has to pour constantly to the people that he loves. And so I'm never missing out by prioritizing my husband and making sure he is straight. Uh, number four, do not reputation destroy and seek revenge. This is a part of emotional manipulation. You can read more about it in the ebook as well. Um, Beyond the chaos, you can read about different ways people emotionally manipulate. But that is not a very classy way to handle your frustrations. I don't recommend even going around sharing too many negatives. Go to wise counsel. You know, um, I had a therapist or I had, you know, wise counsel elders. Women have been married 40, 50 years that I talked to if I had a problem. And I didn't try to go and seek revenge, go on the Internet, go talk bad about my husband. Nothing like that. Don't do that. I mean, I had no reason to do that, but I see that all the time and it's very petty. Be candle yourself class. It's very, very feminine of you to be missed, to never give in to pettiness and don't be petty and be handle yourself uh, very classy and accordingly. Number five is communicate by being vulnerable, not authoritative and demanding and having accusations so for example i say the phrases like i need you and i miss you often um another example of that is saying you know i can't help but miss you you know you bring me safety and happiness when you're home you bring me safety and happiness i miss when you're home um versus you know you never call me don't check up and you're never home enough you don't care you see the the host hostility and the accusations that you are making and what's going to happen is when you um accuse and assume the worst in your communication style, this will put him in a position to want to defend his character. So instead of instead of coming in and being like, oh, you need safety, you need security, you are vo being vulnerable to me, I want to make sure you feel better, you're protected, your emotions are protected. Instead of that being the result that you want, instead he's going to defend his character. So now it's a clash. Now he's saying, how could you say that I don't care about how you? How could you assume that about me? Why would you say that about me? Of course I care about you. You're so emotional. Now you guys are just going back and forth, accusing each other things. Be more vulnerable in your communication. Do not also demand change. Don't demand change. Um, this is something I've learned as a feminine, trying to be a feminine woman. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm like most feminine woman, but trying to learn how to be a feminine woman. I don't try to demand change, okay? It's going to put him in a position to feel as though he is your child. He's inferior to you. You're treating him like a kid. For example, if you're like saying to him, you're no longer going out with your friends because I said so. Like, he's not your kid, you know? Versus you saying, hey, when you're out with your friends, I'm afraid something like bad might happen to you. I'm afraid you're in positions where, you know, it could hurt our relationship. I'm, I'm very afraid of losing you. You know, how can we resolve this? It's a very feminine approach besides demanding. Um, it's going to end up him wanting to once again defend himself because he feels as though, you know, he's submitting to you. He's inferior to you. You're treating him as a child. He doesn't get the choice of like, okay, I'm choosing this because I want to protect you. I want to make sure you're good. Instead, he feels controlled, you know, by you. So it's very important how you're communicating. And then number six, a few more here. Now, every emotion you feel needs to be expressed or validated. Something that I learned, you know, not every emotion I feel needs to be expressed. You know, I have to learn how to be content. I have to learn how to be more patient, have less high ex expectations and, and not saying to lower like expectations that can get misconstrued. What I mean is that I can put my husband at this on this pedestal as like he's a Prince Charming superhero, Superman, never does any wrong, um, is going to save me from myself, my unhappiness, all of my emotions. So and that's just not reality and I'm going to drain myself out and I'm burn myself out and I'm going to burn him out so now every emotion I feel needs to be validated I don't need to seek validation from him like coming to him like you need to validate my feelings you know here's how I'm feeling about you the circumstances the situation what can I do within myself how can I be content within myself and just real quick a quick like example that I've heard that was so beautiful to me was a palm tree takes 10 years to reach its full growth. 
which means for 10 years, someone is constantly watering it for it to get to its adult form. So when you are watering your relationship, think about it as as though it could take years and years and years of you watering before seeing these beautiful big results. Okay, number seven, don't chase or force things. Give him space, allow him space to grow. Once again, patience. My husband is a human being. He's going to have bad days. He's going to handle things not the best. But give him give him his space to figure those things out. I don't need to chase him every time if he is, you know, for example, I've I've coached where, you know, the men could be a little petty maybe. Women could be petty too. But let's say if the man is being petty, he's like, I don't want to talk to you right now. I don't want to talk to you for a couple of days, whatever. Okay, that's fine. Like, I'm not going to go chase you out the door. Feminine energy doesn't chase. It allows things to flow. It's very gentle, okay? If you need your space, that's okay. Understand it, you know? Hit me up when you're feeling a little better. I know that there's a lot of pressure on you right now. There's a lot of pressure. You know, you're overwhelmed. You're under a lot of stress. If that's the way, you know, you feel is best, it's okay. What's going to happen is the more feminine you become, the less they will run away anyways, that you're going to become a place of home and peace for them. Sometimes men need to get away because you're part of the problem. You're part of the chaos. You're not helping the fire cool down, but adding more onto it. So the more you become a feminine woman, become a very peaceful woman, the more they want to come to you and actually, you know, get your advice and say, hey, can I actually spend time with you? You're my peace. You're where I actually find sanctuaries. I want to spend time with you when I'm not feeling good instead of running away from you. And it's never good when a man just wants to run away from you. It always hurts. So become his feminine peace. Um, eight, fall in love with personal growth, learning and improving. This will also keep you from nagging. So always love to improve, always love to grow. I love, love listening to wisdom. I love listening to my husband when he tells me, you know, new information, when he's giving me insight. I love that. I could have a man that's not like that at all who just has nothing to say at all you know no advice no input not trying to correct me not trying to help me see things a new perspective I love that I have that as a partner and when you fall in love with that it it's it's going to keep you from even nagging anyways whenever they critique a little thing or say hey you could do this a little bit better you could do that a little bit better like you know I'm curious into seeing your insight and that'll keep you from getting frustrated and inflecting nine two more Conscious communication. Feminine feminine energy has constant conscious communication. And what I mean by that is you understand his reasoning for being upset, right? When he when your man is coming to you with a problem, take curiosity into what is wrong, okay? Try to understand why he's upset. Offer a solution instead of defending your case. You're not being put on trial if he's coming to you with an issue. You're not being put on trial, okay? You know, say, hey, you know, if you're upset about X, Y, and Z, what if we try X, Y, and Z? You know, and just give insight. If he says, no, that's not going to work for me. Okay, what do you think would work? You know, just be a little bit curious into his issues. Doesn't need to be centered around you. That's something I had to learn. Um, Number three. Do not deflect all the time. You need to show compassion and have intelligence by trying to see his perspective, okay? So if my husband comes to me and says, you know, you're when you're doing the dishes, you're leaving stuff. You know, when you're doing the dishes, you're leaving stuff. I don't like it. You know, I don't really like this. Can you clean a little better? That's a random example that's not going on in my house. But <laughs> if let's say if he came to me and said that, instead of deflecting, like, well, you never do the laundry. You don't fold the laundry. It's deflection. Like, okay, you know, try to actually understand his perspective, hear him for what he's saying, see his point of view. You know, if you need to ask more questions, okay, are you, you know, when I'm doing the dishes, what are you seeing on the dishes? Oh, I see that there's some food still on there. Okay, I will work on that for you. Period. End of discussion. It doesn't always need to turn into an argument. It doesn't need to have your opinion thrown back. This is, this is something I've really learned. Number four, um, show curiosity and is concerned and then five with that make it clear that you understand him so don't give like pity responses make it very clear I understand and acknowledge what you're saying what what I what I've learned about men is that some a lot of masculine men good men they don't want to hear you just come back like I'm so sorry I disappointed you I'm so sorry I'm not good enough I'm so sorry you're not happy with me I'm so sorry that's pity it's pity 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 a lot of men don't even want to hear that <laughs> if they do that's really sad but my husband he does not want to hear that and I've when talking to other couples, they generally the man doesn't want to hear that as a response. They want to hear, I understand your perspective. Why do I understand your perspective? Well, when I'm not, for example, if I'm not doing the dishes properly and there's food left behind, 
bugs can come or that contains our food or that's i'm just giving some random example but you know um that's not healthy whatever the case may be i understand you've you've shared your insight it could be a little gross i will definitely work on that and do you see how i'm like responding back by repeating like what he's asking and having complete understanding of what he's asking i'm not being overly apologetic i'm not giving no pity no pity me i'm a victim i failed you like i'm confident like i got you i got this confidence 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 okay um and consciousness consciousness um 10 lastly show support in his masculinity so find it very attractive when he's being masculine okay women leave their husbands all the time they leave their husbands they leave their relationships because the man is not masculine he's not assertive he's not dominant he's not leading in any type of way but as a woman it's really important that if you want that and that's what you're craving when he is showing that be supportive of it especially if you're in a relationship right now every time your man tries to step up he tries to you know, put his foot down like, hey, I don't like that you disrespect me. Put my foot down with it. And I thought it was so cute. My husband put his foot down with me. I was like, you know what? This is attractive. This is sexy. I like that. I love that, that he's doing that. I I like it because he has a backbone. He's not like a super nice guy who then he wants to be in places where he's nice to everybody and he can use people and be fake with people. He's not fake. He's not a fake guy. He doesn't say exactly what it is. He doesn't want to see me in danger. So when he's saying it, it's because he's very, very, um, you know, trying to protect me in every way. And so he has to say it straightforward, direct. He's not going to sugarcoat nothing. Hey, this is going to put you in danger. Thank you. That's so attractive. And I know you always have my back. I know you always have my back. When he's showing masculinity, be supportive of it. Um, and that's basically how to be a feminine woman uh just a couple key random things on my mind too is like make sure you're dressed nice you take uh consideration into how you're dressed how you smell how you carry yourself you're a lot more like soft-spoken and you can have a raspier voice deeper voice whatever a more sort of tone but you can still be feminine by hyping your man up letting him be the man of the house you know so on and so forth but try to practice not being so hostile when you're talking you know and that's about it. So I hope that helps. You know, it's a fun little episode, episode 14, but I actually think we're not being taught, we're not being taught this stuff of like how to be a little bit more feminine and like supportive of our man and attracted to our man. And I've done research and even having my own husband, I've learned things that he likes. So I hope this helps your relationship too. Alrighty. Thank you guys for joining me. Bye-bye. If you guys want to experience one-on-one -on -one coaching with me where I really help people who do struggle with BPD, do struggle with femininity, and do have relationship issues, you guys can click the link in my bio on my YouTube or on my Instagram bio to my pillar link and you guys will find one-on-one -on -one sessions. I also have ebooks such as How to Magnify the King and Your Husband and I'm the Prize Said Who, which are both self-reflection ebooks that have really saved and helped marriages. 